One of the key things I wanted you to get out of it is solid liquid gas, the three states of matter. What is it about the states of matter that we kind of focused on in the lectures? Well, let me ask you a different way. What is it that you know about the states of matter? What things do you know about gases, liquids, and solids? Just throw some things out that you know about them. Atoms move more freely in gases. Okay, atoms move more freely in gases. Perfect. So you know that. What else do you know? I hope you've all had experience with solids, liquids, and gases in your everyday life. Yes? They take up spaces differently. They take up spaces differently. How does that work? Um, well, like, how do they take up space differently? Um, I don't know if I tell you that scientifically, but. Yeah, no, I'm not looking for scientific. I'm looking for just your everyday experience. Because believe it or not, what you experience about the world generally is reality, we hope. Right? It would be different than putting the same amount of uh, water. Okay, so if I put a solid brick in a box, what does it do? It just sits there. It just sits there, holds its shape, holds its volume. If I put a liquid in there, what does it do? It fills it in. Now, can the liquid expand to bigger than its volume you start with? No, it just flows in and fills it however high it fills it. What about a gas? If I take a gas and release it into some volume, what does it do? It just fills the whole volume, right? So that's the fundamental difference between the three of them. Gases and liquids both flow, but they fill space differently. That's how we know when we have them. The, the fancy term we say is the solid has a fixed volume and doesn't flow. The liquid has a fixed volume but flows to the shape of its container. A gas does not have a fixed volume. It fills the container. Now, from an energy point of view, and this is the key new idea, which you probably learned somewhere, but is really what I want you to kind of focus on. What is the difference between the energy of a gas, liquid, and solid? Which has the most energy? Gas. Gas. Why? Um, the particles are moving around faster. So. Particles are moving around really fast. And that's what type of energy? Kinetic. Kinetic energy. And fundamentally, for a given material, is it gas at a higher or a lower temperature? Higher. Higher. And temperature, from a science point of view, when we talk about temperature, that's simply a measure of the energy. It's how much energy the system has. So a gas being at a higher temperature than the solid has more energy. Now, the tricky science term that's in this week is heat. What is heat from a science point of view? Yeah, so what does that fancy word mean? The transfer of energy. So is heat telling you how hot or cold something is? No. no. What is it simply telling you? It's a little more than just the difference between two temperatures. If I do have a difference in temperature, I do get a flow of energy. And that flow of energy is the heat. But how much energy flows is the heat. And how much energy flows really depends on a couple of factors. Okay, one of the biggest factors being the specific heat of the materials. Okay, if you remember specific heat um, or heat capacity, that tells you how much energy you need to change the temperature by a certain amount. So if I have two materials and the temperature difference is two degrees, the amount of heat that flows, it'll flow until they're each the same temperature. So one will go down by two, the other will go up by, I mean, one will go down by one, the other will go up by one, and they'll be at the same temperature. Okay? But the amount of energy that was will depend on the specific heat that was involved. So though temperature gives us a measure of energy and heat gives us a measure of how much energy flows, we do need to know things like the specific heat to know exactly what the relation between temperature and energy is. Does that make sense? It's sort of like gravitational potential energy, right? If it depends on the height. But it also depends on what else? The mass. the mass. So at the same height, the more mass of the object, the more energy. So same sort of thing with temperature. Now, what are, I'll stand in front of it. What are the other ways we can change the energy of a system? So heat is how, energy, how systems change energy by being at two different temperatures. 
What are other ways we can change energy? Force, right? Which we officially call what? It has a fancy name. Well, when a force acts on an object over a distance, we're doing what? Work. work. That's the fancy name for it. But you can do work. You can apply forces, right? Because if I apply force, I speed it up and I change its kinetic. kinetic energy. So I can change energy with forces. What's another way I can change the energy of a system? So all electrical energy, gravitation, those are all going to involve work because they're going to involve forces ultimately, but those are ways to do it. If I have a box of particles and I want to know the energy in the box, what can I do? I mean, if I want to change the energy in the box, what can I do? I have a bunch of particles bouncing around in a box and I want to change the total energy in that box. Well, without heat and without work, what's another way I could do it? Chemical. Without chemical. Okay, if I make the box bigger, what might I be doing? Putting stuff in. in or out. If I take stuff in or out, I'll change the energy of the box. Okay. Again, one way to keep in mind of this is think about your money and how it can change. One way it changes how much money is in the bank is by taking money in and out. So we can take particles in and out and we can take radiation in and out. And we're going to see that in our demos. And we're going to learn more about that when we do E&M next week. So the other two big ideas, we mentioned specific heat. That's how much energy you have for a given temperature change. The other important idea, and we're going to do a demo on this, is conduction. That's how fast the temperature changes when you put two things in contact with each other, right? So if I have two things at T1 and T2 and I touch them together, I want to know how fast that heat's going to move. That's going to depend on the conduction. And what's interesting about this, how many of you have ever been to one of these hands-on science museums? Yeah, one of the coolest demos I saw is you put your hand on two plates. Um, one of them is typically metal and one's ceramic. And the plates are at the same temperature, but you'd swear the metal was colder. And the reason is metal conducts faster than ceramic. It has a higher conductivity. So when your hand touches it, what do you think happens to the temperature in your hand? Which one changes faster? The one on the metal. And that's really what you're detecting, is how quickly your temperature is changing. Your sense of temperature is based on how quickly you gain or lose energy relative to it. So when it's a lot colder outside, the temperature difference between the air and your body is bigger, you detect that cold by how fast the heat flows out. When it's not that much colder than you, that slows down the heat flow. So when you touch two things that are at the same temperature, but one of them is a different conductivity, that's one of the reasons one will feel cooler even though it's not necessarily cooler. Does that make sense? Um, now the other thing that comes into play that we're going to have to think about is entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. And that's a big one. There's a lecture on that. It's very, very useful at the end of the day for a practical application, which is at the end of the day, this is what tells us that you can never make a perfectly efficient engine. And this is what tells us that whenever energy is changing form, you're going to release some sort of heat. Okay, you're going to have waste heat. These are key at understanding right now a big issue, which is different power sources and different forms of energy. What's efficient, what's clean. When we talk about clean energy, there's lots of different ways that's generated in making energy. But anytime you go from something to electrical en energy, there will be some sort of waste, something that has to happen. So you'll have to figure out what that waste is and do you want to use it? How do you want to use it? Is it good or bad? The short form statement of it is entropy always increases. Um, but that's, that's more of a conceptual thing, and that is something that's true only at what we call constant temperature. And it has to do a little bit with our gas liquid solid, um, but for the gas liquid solid, what I really want you to focus on at this point in this class is the energy involved in going from gas liquid to solid.